Hello, eighth graders. This is part two of your Greek pottery demonstration. Now, if you watched the first part like you were supposed to, you are to this point where you are, and I haven't smoothed that in yet, where you have done your base using the bottom of your container to trace a circle. You've attached it to your bat, okay, by putting two coils straight up, okay. This one is the third coil out because I've already got, if you can see, it's starting to slant out. I've attached it on the inside, but I haven't smoothed it on the outside yet. But what I wanted to do is just show you the process of where you go from here because you're going to be working on your own for a little bit and you need to know how to make the coils properly and also what shape you need. So you are either making a crater, which is a wide mouth vessel used for mixing wine and water, or you are making an amphora, which is a small mouth vessel used for storing wine or oil. So you have to make that decision before you get too much farther because what you do from here, it starts the same, but if you are making a crater, you continue to go out. If you are making an amphora, you can come out a few, then you're going to come up a few, then you're going to come in a few, and then straight up. So what I'm going to do today is show you how to make a crater all the way beginning to end. So this is your beginning that we talked about. And I've made a few coils so that you can see how they're made. I, I showed it in the first video, but I wanted to show you how they compare to a Sharpie. They're really close in size, maybe a little bit bigger than a Sharpie marker, but you want them to all be consistently the same width. That's how you get your, your size of your pot to be the same, and, and it makes it level all the way across. So I'm going to show you a few things on your clay that you're going to be doing. Okay, so when you get clay, you always want to take a good-sized handful but not too much, like this much, okay? Close the bag every single time, okay? You're gonna squeeze it out. This is the really important part because you've gotta squeeze it out to where both your hands can fit on it at the same time. If you just make it a little block like that, you're gonna have a hard time rolling it out. When you roll it, you wanna be consistently even. Now I'm pressing a little bit more as I pull back than I am when I push forward. Pull back and I'm giving it about the same amount of pressure. Now I'm gonna go really fast so that you can see if it starts to flatten, okay? And you can see that it's starting to flatten because, okay, sorry, I had to wait for that bell. It's starting to get this oval shape. You don't want an oval shape, you want it round. So what I'm doing is on that oval side, I'm tipping it up, okay? I'm gonna tap it down so it comes back into kind of a squarish shape, and then I'm gonna roll it from there. You wanna have your fingers all spread out and rolling it out, keeping it consistent all the way down the coil. Watch your coil, because if you roll too much on one end, it's gonna to be too skinny, okay? See this? If I compare it to my marker, it's skinnier than the marker there. So you wouldn't be able to use that. I'd take that off, use it in, for another batch, okay? But I'm gonna roll out, see, and that got too skinny. So I'm gonna roll out some coils that are very similar in shape to these and start adding them to this. Now, I want you to make one coil at a time. I can make a whole bunch of coils because I'm fast, okay? And I've done this for a long time but you guys need to make one coil at a time. So here's what's gonna happen with these coils. I'm going to hatch, which is just scratching into your surface on the outside edge, because once you start adding those coils to the outside, they're going to automatically slant to the outside. And that's gonna make it easier for you to put your coils slanting out, okay? So your you should be able to see the slant here, okay, coming to the outside. I will smooth this seam in once I get the next coil on, okay? I'm gonna use my shortest coil 
and I can feel that it's already starting to dry a little bit because it's been sitting there a little bit. So if I'm able to pull it right off, see how easy that was to pull off? I might need to, to wet it just a little bit. So just, I have water in this, get it on the fingers, just like that, and tap it. Okay, not too much. Water can be good, but water can weaken your clay. So just a little, that's all you need. Because all you need it to do is sink down into that hatched area. Okay, so now I'm going to press it down into there and I'm kind of trying to support my entire side while I do it because I'm working with some pretty soft clay right now. Okay, once you get to this part, okay, where you've got the, the seam here, you're going to press it down on there. Okay, you're going to press it down on there and then just pinch it off. See that? Okay, and then just press it all in place. There's our tardy bell. So now at this point, we can smooth. But remember, we need to hold on to this outside edge as we are smoothing because we want to keep, we want to keep this angle. Okay, and I'll show it to you as we build but you gotta protect it. If you don't protect it enough, then your pot is going to collapse because it's gonna have too much of an angle. So you might even have to lift a little bit as you smooth that inside. And right now we're going vertically. Okay, so I've got my vertical and then I'm gonna do the horizontal. Now we're doing that horizontal, okay? And it should be all smooth. Now I do the outside, okay? See my angle? Slanting out, that's what we need. So now I protect the inside, hold on to the outside, and I'm going to smooth it just down past that previous seam. And I like to just lean over. You can see my hair, because I'm leaning over and looking at my seam to make sure I get it all covered. Okay, so you can see that that's been smooth, okay? It's leaving a little gap here, so that's when we do our, horiz our horizontal smooth, okay? Smoothing it all out. This is where you might have some clay come off. You can add that to another coil. And if you're going to have some coils sitting out for a little while or your clay sitting out for a little while, you want to you may want to take your plastic wrap and cover it. There's plastic wrap in the windowsill. If I didn't say that in the first video, I'm, I can't remember if I did or not, but that is what you use to wrap your project. Okay, so now I've got it smooth all the way around. Okay, no seams are showing and I'm ready to put my next coil on. But see my angle? Okay, angle is coming up this way. I'm going to make a crater so, I'm coming out with my coils. Okay, again, protecting the outside while I'm hatching just to make sure that I don't whip it around because I'm, I'm not being delicate with the hatching. I'm ripping into the surface so that my clay attaches to it. If I can lift that coil right off, it's not attached. Okay, hatch it first. And I'm going to get my next size coil and I'm going to Press it down, pressing it, okay? It's very important that you push. See what my thumb is doing? Pushing, pushing into the surface of the clay. If it doesn't, if you don't do that, you're not attaching it, okay? So that's very, very important. Then again, pinching it off. Now at this point, I want you to look at this. It's not totally round. It's got this edge bulging out. So I'm going to 
kind of manipulate it a little bit, get it a little bit more round so that I can smooth that in. Okay, and I'm going to be quick here. I'm probably just going to smooth the inside real quick just so that it's attached. And then I'll add another coil and then I'll smooth it all in just so you can see it a little bit faster. Okay, smooth in. Hatching. Remember, I'm making that wide mouth vessel, so I have to come out. At this point, if I were making an amphora, I would start to come straight up so that I could create that, that belly, okay? Pressing it in. Making sure it's round, smoothing the inside. I always start with inside. It's just easier because I can see it right off the bat. And you can see that my crater is not moving because I'm really protecting the shape by holding on to it. I even have my thumb on top to protect that from moving. Okay, there's my vertical. Now I'm ready for my horizontal. Okay. Smoothed in, nice and round. And I've still got a nice angle coming up. Okay. Now, if you haven't gotten this far in, in a, a couple of class periods. You might need to come in, work on it during homeroom, uh, because especially if you're missing for wrestling or any other sport, you need to make sure that you are coming in and, and taking care of it because we have a very limited amount of time to work on this. As you know, we're coming back from a couple of snow days and that puts us in a time crunch for getting this done. Oops, see what I just did? I bonked it, but that's not gonna hurt anything if I just put it back, okay? It still remembers its shape. Clay is easy to control. Okay, so uh, we have very little time before our Christmas vacation. We need at least a week for this to dry and then I need to fire them all in the kiln, and then we need to have a day to glaze it and a couple of days to paint them. So that's what's giving us the time crunch, okay? Now, smoothing, I like to smooth this direction. That's my own personal preference because I'm right-handed. So I might, and I'll have to kind of go forward so you can see. Okay, got all that smoothed in. There's a little few pieces of clay that's just needing to be smoothed completely. Okay, no seam showing. My angle is still good. Still got a nice round pot. Okay, I'm gonna kind of pull it this way just a little bit. I've got some squishy clay. So at this point you need to determine, is it tall enough for me to make it, uh, sorry, I'm evening it up over here. I can see it's a little taller on this side. 
and it's probably because one of my coils was slightly thinner on this side and or it was thicker on this side so I'm just kind of pinching it where it's a little thicker and uh, changing the shape a little bit so this I need to change this just a little bit and I can lean it on its side and it's not going to fall down because it's attached here okay I've pressed that clay in so it's going to hang on pretty well okay and it will pop off when it's ready to pop off so we don't have to worry about it oh and one thing I do want to tell you is when when uh, each day ends we're going to get plastic wrap from the windowsill okay so it's going to be this plastic wrap from the windowsill we're going to pull a big piece out and we're going to cover this every day now if you've got a nice piece of plastic that's hanging on pretty well you don't have to get a new piece every day but you need to make sure it's completely covered if you're going to be gone you need you need to check on it to make sure that it is staying moist enough and we're going to use this drying cabinet the ceramics wet cabinet and we're going to put our projects inside here okay that's where you're going to store your stuff every day and then when you come back each the next day every time what you're going to do is you may have to wet down your project a little bit because it'll have had a day or two to dry depending on if you had a sport that you had to be gone for and so what you'll need to do is take your water and run water around your top edge just to make sure that it stays moist enough for you to work with if you hatch it and it's still feeling pretty dry and your your coil let's say you've got a coil on there and you test it and it pulls right off wet it down again hatch it again make sure that you've got something that you can really attach to okay so at this point I want to grab a ruler and check my height okay and what you can do is use these rulers that are kind of damaged they're over clear over at the end beyond the cabinets they don't have you know they're kind of faded they don't have any uh, cork on the back but then you can check how tall is this it's two and three-fourths inches tall okay two and three-fourths inches tall is kind of small but since we're in a time crunch we may go ahead and put just one more coil on this and then start to move in to create the crater okay so I'm gonna go ahead and hatch this and you can see that I'm kind of crisscrossing my hatching so that I really get it torn up okay that's what it should look like but it shouldn't take you more than 10 or 15 seconds to do your hatching if it's taking you longer you're being too precious with it okay you gotta just tear up the clay and let's move it because like I said time crunch is kind of freaking me out a little bit and I want to make sure that we get all of our projects done before Christmas. Okay. Let's move that part in so it really sticks. Make sure, see I can pull up on it and it's not coming off. Yeah, I think this is going to be the perfect size for a crater. Smoothing the inside. Smoothing the outside. And I'm still keeping that same angle. Sorry, I'm leaning over it. That I've been keeping all along. Pressing on the inside as I'm pressing on the outside to protect it. You don't want it to come up in a cylinder shape. And as you can see, you can, you can hold it this way, you can hold it this way. I just move my hand around to what's comfortable. There we go. 
and then my horizontal smoothing. And I think it's just the right size to make our next coil going up because we have to make the distinction between the bowl part of the crater and the rim. Okay. Okay. So look at the shape. That's the kind of shape you need. And let's look at the size. Okay, we are now smack dab at three inches tall. That doesn't seem like it's very big, but it's seven inches across. Okay, so that's a pretty good size. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my little coils that I've been breaking off, and I'm going to put those together to make my coil that's going to be coming straight up. And it's going to actually look like it's coming in when you first do it, but when you press it in, you'll see that it is just coming in or coming straight up a little bit. Okay, this one I'm, I need to hold on to this. How I'm hatching this is right on this edge, okay, this inside edge of the angle. Now, if you look at the angle, okay, here's, our, here's where we've been putting the coil, right here. Well, now I'm coming up to where the corner turns, okay, and I'm just hatching that edge. And again, I'm kind of going over it a little bit. I'm making it bigger hatching than the coil is large because I can always smooth it in. And I want to make sure I've got plenty of hatching on there to grab onto it because that hatching is kind of like sandpaper. Okay, it grips. Okay, I, I want you to see I'm pinching this together. Okay, that kind of helps me keep my shape but it also helps it stick because I can pull on this and I'm not getting it to lift off. Okay, so this part, I'm going to, I'm gonna turn it so you can see what I'm doing here. I'm gonna squiggle it and press it into that previous coil. And then I'm again going to, my thumb on the inside, my fingers on the outside. I'm gonna turn this so you can see it. And I'm pressing it together, push, push, push. Okay, pushing here, pulling here, all right? Looks like I have just, see if you get something like this where you got a piece that's open because your coil was maybe not round, you can just push a little piece in there and that'll fill that spot, okay? And then I'll take, I'm not too much of a fan of that coil, so I'm gonna take this coil that's a little bit better maybe smooth it out a little bit because I've been adding clay to it. Okay, press it in, push and pull. So I'm just pinching together, okay? And I get to here and it looks like it's gonna overlap. We don't want it to overlap. We just want it to come and meet it, okay? So we're just gonna smooth that together. There we go. So all my coils are pieced together and now I can smooth. Okay, so the outside's super easy. All you're going to do is you're just kind of pinch. See how I'm pinching that together like this? It's almost like making a pie crust. Pinch, pinch, pinch. Because we want that shape, that illusion of that coil coming in a little bit. The fun thing about this is yeah, you can pinch it so it looks like that for now, but then when you smooth it, you're going to hold the inside and you're just going to smooth that edge and round it out. And I'm just keeping my finger kind of stiff so that my finger can have strength to press all of those edges in and smooth it. So 
sorry, I'm kind of getting out of the view. I hope you can see how it's turning. Okay. Kind of up on top, pushing, pushing, pushing down around the corner. Okay, and then I'll show you the whole shape so you can see what I'm aiming at as far as the shape goes. There, I think I got all of it. Okay, so see the shape that we got? Okay, yeah, I couldn't see this. So it's good to have a video. I can kind of smooth that in. Anywhere that it's kind of overlapping. You might have to lean over and look underneath to see that you're getting that all smoothed into the base. All right, so see what our shape is doing now? It's coming up and it's curving back this way, okay? So now I'm gonna smooth this. So this is basically gonna be almost blind because if you're looking at it from overhead like I am, you're gonna hold up on this and you're going to push and do this little kind of J shape, okay? So here we are, a little J shape. Curving, see how my wrist is turning? That's what you're doing. You're turning, turning, turning all the way around. Pushing it in. Now, because I'm doing this all in one setting, my clay is not able to harden up at all so I can't go very big with this because it's too soft. I could collapse my pot if I did too much more with it as far as height goes because it's pretty wet clay and it needs that bottom part to harden up a little bit just to give it some stability so each day that you work on it you want to get a few coils done at a time uh, so there you go, see, look at that. All nice and smooth inside. The shape is really good. Okay, so now my next coil is gonna go right on top. Okay, so I'm going to hatch the very top that it looks like it was angling in, but this is actually right on top. Just to give it a little bit more height and distinguish between the bowl portion of the crater and the rim portion of the crater. So when the Greeks were using this as a mixing bowl, they wouldn't have filled it above this portion, okay? Because this would have been the bowl area, and then what we're making right now would have been the uh, rim part. I've got a few pieces of clay sticking on here. Okay, so right on top, I'm holding my fingers turn this underneath here, okay? And then I'm going to grab a hold of that and I'm going to press down while supporting the inside. And you can see it's kind of squishing back and forth, so I might have to tuck my hand underneath this too and kind of support it while I'm at, at least while I'm laying it on there and then I can go back and do some more things to support it. Okay, cuz right now it's not really attached well because I see how I can lift it off. It's just because I have not been able to give it enough support. So now while it's on there, I can hold up from the bottom and I can press down and still hold underneath here with my finger. So pressing it on, you can switch hands if you need to, but I'm kind of lifting up on the outside while I'm pushing down on the inside, just so it gives it more support and I don't lose my shape. 
All right, perfect. Okay, so see how we're seeing that rim, where that is placed, so we still see the shape. Okay, so now I'm supporting the inside, and I'm just going to press it just into my rim, my little belly part there. Okay, so now just a little bit. I don't have to go very far with it because the whole point is seeing that change of shape. It's going from the belly to the rim. There we go. So it's just its basic smoothing. So now I'm really going to uh, modify that a little bit so that I can really see the change. Okay, I'm pressing hard, so that means I'm really keeping a hold of the inside so that I can make that shape really well known. Okay, because I want to see this dent here, okay, and this curve here. So you might have to give a few smooths here and then smooth it on the outside just to make sure we keep that shape. I'm losing my shape here. I'm going to lift it a little bit because uh, it's so wet. So I have to be really careful. I might have to hold on to it a little bit. So what I'm doing now is I'm holding it here and I'm actually pulling up with my thumb so it doesn't sink down and, and I lose that shape that I need. I apologize that this video is so long. I wish I were going to be here to demonstrate it to you. It's too bad that we had school canceled because this would have been a lot easier. Okay, so see that? Smoothed but we still see that rounded shape going down into the bowl. That's what you need, okay? And then the inside is what I need to smooth next. So I'm really gonna hold on to it here just to make sure I can really not lose that shape that I need. I don't want it to sink down. and then the horizontal. In between each one, always check your shape to make sure that you're, you're keeping your shape that you need. So I'm always looking at the roundness here, making sure it's staying round. I'm always checking this shape, okay? And it looks okay, kind of double checking. Looks like it was sinking down a little. All right, so it looks like we're okay. And now I make my rim. Okay, so I've got all these pieces and I want to go ahead and make one whole coil. These are all those excess pieces that I had. And they are touch dry because they've been sitting out in the air and I want a nice clean spot to make my rim. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take just a little bit of moisture Squish it into my clay so that I have nice wet clay to work with. And kind of move this. Oh, and, and make sure everybody has their own table. This is important because you need to have the space. Okay, smooth this all the way out. Kind of my hot dog shape that I can get both hands on. I'm gonna roll it out real quick. Make sure you're always going all the way to the ends. Okay, and I'm just slowing down because I'm looking at my shape all the way down, making sure it is the correct size, okay, and it is, so I can't add it yet because I haven't got it hatched. Always make your coil before you hatch. And now I'm going to put my hatching on the very outside edge of this last coil that I made because it's going to be our lip. And again, it's not taking me more than 10 to 15 seconds to make my hatching. Okay, and I'm gonna look at it real quick. This side is wanting to sink down because of this wet clay. So I just keep having to double check it just to make sure, see how easy it moves. You guys aren't gonna have that problem. Okay, so 
again, I'm kind of holding my thumb, I don't know if you can see it, holding my thumb underneath the rim, holding my finger on top of the coil, and pinching the two together on the outside, because this is going to be your lip. Perfect. Okay, now I can put this back in my clay bag. Make sure my clay bag's closed, and then I'm going to smooth that part in. Okay, I'm going to double check. So what I want it to look like is I want to be able to see the previous edge, but this is going to be on the outside, okay? Not, not sitting beside it, it's still on the coil, but it's angling, it's angling out like that, okay? So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get my finger tucked underneath here so that when I smooth this part in, it doesn't go anywhere. So what's happening here is you see that angle and you still see that angle, okay? And I can pull up on it too, just to make sure that it's staying in place. Your finger should be able to tuck in there. Okay. Again, pulling up on this, I may need to stick if you have this problem, by the way, if something happens that you're working really fast and you have really wet area under here, you can take a piece of clay if you need to. I think just a ball of clay. This, it seems like, uh, let me see, yeah. It's this side that wants to sink down, so I might just tuck a chunk of clay under there just to hold it up. It's going to slant it for a little bit, but it's going to support it while I'm trying to do this. So I might just do that to this side too, just to make it hold on a little bit while I'm working with this. That way it's not sagging down too much. And then I'll just take them out when I go to wrap it. And actually if I get the whole thing done, I won't need to wrap it because remember you are going to be carving into it as well because you're going to be carving your symbols. Uh, if you choose geometric period. Remember that in the geometric period they had geometric shapes only. And of course those uh, figures that we saw in the Attic Crater and the Dipolon Cemetery um, amphora. Okay, You can do that kind of stuff if you want. Normally we just do geometric shapes. Okay, But if you choose to do the archaic style, you're going to tell a story in your pot which means you're going to carve some sort of symbolic story. And I'll show you an example of that. But if you uh, make a crater, it's a little more dif difficult if your crater's not really tall to make a story. So if you make a crater, I would highly recommend just doing geometric. It's a lot easier. But if you did a, an amphora, which is that small mouth vessel, it has a little more space to it. So you could actually draw or carve in a story. Okay. So I've got my horizontal now, I mean my vertical, and now I'm doing my horizontal. And you'll be able to see the whole shape and the rim and everything, what it should look like when you're completely finished. So see how those chunks of clay are giving it a little bit more support? And it really needed it because it was really sinking down, I was having trouble. And that's just because of how wet it is. I've never built this in all one setting. Usually it's over several days. You should be able to get yours made in a week, okay? But if you're gone, uh, then you're responsible for coming in. Okay, so let's take a look at this. See how it's kind of sinking down on this side? That's just, again, that's that, that wetness. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to, to take two chunks of clay I'm just going to stick one here, stick one here, just to shore it up a little bit more because I need to also make handles, okay? So there you are, okay? There's your shape. It's smooth so that you can see the entire rim coming out. See your angle? 
Okay, I haven't smoothed it completely. But now to, to make handles, okay? I'm just gonna make some simple ones that are pretty fast for this particular pot, and I'm just gonna make them starting just in the rim and coming out to the outside edge. You don't make as big of a coil. Just smooth it out to, again, where I can get both hands on it. Clean off your area a little bit. And I'm, I'm gonna make this big enough to hang on to a pot of this size. Okay, so it's okay if you're, listen to this, how you can hear the thump, 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 thump. That's showing that your coil is kind of becoming a strap. Remember that, how if I cut this in half, you can see that kind of oval shape. Well, on this particular thing, it's okay if it becomes an oval shape because uh, it, it becomes a strap handle. It'll be really easy to work with. So this size, I would say, is double the thickness of a Sharpie marker. Okay, so that's about the size you want for your handle. And I'm just going to kind of start it in the rim because that will support the rim really well. And then I'm going to end it just below, just below the belly. And I'm going to do it on a part where I don't have uh, clay. So I'm going to start it here, end it here. And you don't want gigantic handles that stick out like big giant Dumbo ears, okay? You want a handle that you can maybe get two fingers in just because it's going to fit the size of the pot better, okay? Now, once you have one handle made, you can just use that same coil to make your second handle. Just lay it out on there, measure it out, okay? And cut it to the same size. That way your handles are nice and even, okay? I have two handles handles that are the same size now. Okay, so then I'm going to hatch the edge. Okay, and I want it hatched a lot because I want that to really grip. Okay, and I'm going to press that into the rim, supporting the outside, pressing the inside, and then I'm just going to smooth it into the rim and then I'm going to curl it, hatch where it's going to attach. Now by the time you get to this stage your base might be really dry. You, mean, you probably will need to throw some water on that before you press it in but mine is still really wet. So press it in, smooth, okay but don't press it so much that you smash your handle flat. If you smash your handle flat, there's no more handle to support the pot and it'll end up just breaking off. So you need to make sure that you keep your thickness. Okay, I haven't smoothed it completely in. I've just kind of pressed it in. But see how it's still the same amount of thickness all the way down? I'm just pressing it in and smoothing it so that it... Uh, hangs on to the pot. Now, one thing that's really important is do not try to attach a handle that's just butt to butt. It has to lay on something like the hand, the rim, or it can tuck under the rim like this, okay? Because see how you've got space there that can hang on to it, but you can't attach it this way. It'll break off, okay? And that's why I attached it under the belly, because then I could lay it like this. But if you try to abut it up against, it's going to break off. Those will be weak points, okay? So then, on the next part, you're going to measure straight across like this, okay? And mark where your next handle's going to go, okay? And then I'll hatch that. Really, really hatch it, okay? And then I'm going to do the same thing I did before, lay it on there, press it in, supporting my pot, okay, smooth my edges, and this one I'll smooth it while I've got it here instead of afterwards, it's a little bit easier, okay, and then 
do what I did before. I'm going to curl it around. It's about the same size. Curl it underneath where it's going to attach. Lift it up. Hatch it where it needs to go. And press it in. Smooth my edges. Right now I can't see my edges, so I'm just kind of feeling where they are. Okay, because I can lift it and check. Okay, smoothing it. Apologize, it's hard to see. There. So my outside is pretty good, but I still need a little bit here. So I'm just going to take that rim and I'm going to, the belly rim, and smooth that into my handle. So then the last step of handles is to make sure they're the same shape. So if I've pinched this one here, I need to pinch this one here. So it looks the same when I have the whole thing done. Then I can go back and I can just kind of smooth any edges that need smooth. Okay, take off any chunks of clay. At this point, you'll start your carving. And one thing about your carving, I'm not gonna carve the whole thing, uh, but you need to make your bands. I usually start my first band at, at the belly of the crater. And you're just going to use the, the carving tool, okay? It's a cleaning tool with a curved end and a blade end, okay? The curved end is what you're going to be using to carving, to do carving. And you're always going to have that point, okay? This point down here, the V, pointed towards your pot. So I'm going to turn it so that my V is pointed towards the pot, and I'm going to carve into the surface a, see if you make a mistake, just wipe it out, a line that separates those two areas. Okay, that's a band. Okay, and this one I can go under my handle, come all the way across, whoops, again I made a mistake so I'm just smoothing it out. And your, your depth is probably going to be about an eighth of an inch deep because we're going to paint these and we want the paint to sink down into the pot or in the, into the carving. And you can't do that if the, if the carving's not deep enough. So see that, how deep that is? And it doesn't have to be perfectly straight. In fact, not perfectly straight is kind of interesting. Okay, so that's when you decide on your shapes. So maybe I'll do some triangles. So look at this. If I turn my carving tool each time, I'll get a better carving. If I just go psh, 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 I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm just tearing it, okay? And it's not going to be a very nice carving. So you have to turn your tool. See how I'm always facing it towards the clay. See, always facing it towards the clay. Okay, I'm just going to do a few so you guys can see what it looks like. Okay, and that filled the space. Then I would do my next band probably right here all the way around and then I could get shapes here and shapes on the bottom. Okay, but for now, I'm going to keep my clay underneath there just to hold it so it doesn't collapse on me because this is acting really soggy. I might need to move that piece. There we go. Okay, so that is your basic building of the Greek pottery. And when I get back, I would like to see everybody at least to the stage of making their handles. Okay, if you haven't made your handles by Friday, uh, make sure that you wrap your your bowl portion really, really well, maybe even wet it down a little bit before the weekend so that for, uh, Saturday and Sunday doesn't dry your pot out so much that you have a hard time and adding handles. Okay, so keep referring back to this video if you have any questions. It's going to be up on Schoology the whole time so you can always access it. All right, see you later. Have fun with it. I can get this.